This is going to be my deepest tutorial ever. Now, I'm not much of a mobile gamer, but when I am, it has to be PUBG Mobile. And these three separate design techniques that I'm going to show you in this tutorial will help you celebrate the Potopia Design Project. It's the fifth global design event ever, and it's begun right now. I have to make three separate character designs for the PDP contest, but what I want to show you guys is the backdrops. I'm going to teach you how to create three different types of backdrop. One fire, one space scene, and one jungle scene. These are all techniques that you can use in your own artwork, and they're really simple to do it yourself at home with stuff from around the house. But before that, to celebrate the Potopia design project, I've got three characters to design. So let's go do that. Flashback. Welcome to the past. So I'm here in the office. It takes me about a week to design this stuff. I've got three characters to design, so I've fired up Adobe Illustrator, no time like the present. As part of the latest update to PUBG Mobile, two new skins have been introduced the Spectre Soldier set and the Silent Agent set. And both of these characters are designed by players who participated in the PDP design contest. These skins look sick. And there are two new contests live now. The first is the PDP PUBG Mobile Esports Outfit Design Contest, running from November 15th to the 1st of February, 2024 where you have the chance to win 16,000 US dollars. The second is the PDP Ultimate Set Design Challenge, happening from September 18th to January 19th next year, with a chance to win 50,000 US dollars. As well as these two skins, I know I really want to paint the iconic Lone Survivor, so I'm designing him too. I designed these characters in the Adobe Suite by taking the color profiles from each of the references and breaking them down into different layers. All these layers come together to create a multi-layered stencil that I can apply with spray paint. To cut these stencils, I use my own tech 60 watt laser cutter, but you could also use something like a cricket machine or even cut it by hand with something like a craft knife. Let's paint these guys. Here's everything you need to get started. First, you need something to paint on. I'm using canvas today, but you can also use a gloss coated card like this one here. These mediums are my go-to materials for one reason. They both have a coated surface. When you're working with spray paint, if you work with something that doesn't have a coated surface, the paint will just soak into the paper and it won't remain workable. And of course, spray paint. I prefer the Montana Gold range, but there's loads of paint brands out there. Just take some time to find the right one for you. You also need some spare card like this. You can use the same poster board material that I talked about before, or just any card stock will do. A palette knife. These are used for scratching out or signing your work. I prefer the metal ones to the plastic. Some round stencils to create planets with. I use anything from bowls to tins, lids, and even spray paint caps. Texturing material. These are items that we can create texture with so we can form shapes and mountains and any sort of texture that we need in the painting. I'm pretty famous for using the Little Weekly because it's free and I can steal this, but you can also use things like plastic bags or cling film, shrink wrap, bubble wrap, anything you can get your hands on that will create some nice, interesting texture on the painting. Some paper towel. This is also used for texture and some other effects. And above all, something to protect yourself. I use a half mask respirator, but you can get disposable respirators that you can get from like a hardware store or at worst case scenario, just paint outside. And now we're ready to start our first effect. I'm gonna show you how to paint the fire. So the colors you're gonna need for this are dark red, light red, dark orange, light orange, dark yellow, and you guessed it, light yellow, and a black, a cheap store brand paint will do. And the only other thing you need to make fire is some magazine paper. I think we're gonna add this fire to our lone survivor piece. Okay, let's do this then. Create this fire effect, I need to lay down all the colors in this order, starting with the light yellow and finishing with the dark red. I'm going around the character here because I don't need anything to be behind him. Dark yellow next. Light orange. Dark orange. Light red. I love this like scarlet colour and the dark red. Next I want the cheap black. The reason I picked a cheap one is it's typically a bit thinner so it wets the paint back up nice and easily. It's also super workable. So I'm just going to darken down the outsides like this. Next I want the magazine paper and I'm going to scrumple that up into like a kind of log shape but with some crinkles in it. And just using some light pressure, I'm going to drag that texture and material out to create some flames. The more pressure you apply, the more likely you are to bring out the lighter yellow at the bottom. So you can switch up the pressure as you create this fire. Because there's a character here, I'm just dusting in some yellow on the inside of him to give like a really cool glowing effect. Back in with the black and I'm just going around the outside to create a vignette. 
Simple as that. That's how you make basic fire with spray paint. Stick around to the end of the video to see the finished piece. Okay, next up, space. Remember all those bowls and lids? Well, now you need them. I'm just gonna start by laying these out exactly where I want all my planets to go. Peek the plate, make it a comeback. If you know, you know. Yes, no, y yes, no. Yes. I'm just starting by outlining all of these guys and then for a second, get rid of them. Now the key to any good planet is variance in texture and color. You notice I've got a bunch of random colors here. You cannot go wrong. Pick whatever you want. So maybe if I'm starting with this guy right here, I'll start with a dark purple down in the corner. A mid purple across the middle. And this lighter purple around the top edge. So this is gonna be the dark side, this is gonna be the light side, and this is crucial. You must know where your light sources are coming from on every planet you paint. Black down here, and white around here. Back in with our texture and material, I'm using magazine paper again, I'm just gonna scrumple it up. Now laying that over our first planet here, I'm gonna use my fingers to swipe through that paint on the other side. And when I peel it off, it will reveal some texture. That looks sick. The next thing you wanna do is add a shadow. So taking the black, I'm just gonna hit this corner in like a curving motion, and that's gonna give us our dark side of our planet. It looks better already. And from here, the only thing that varies is how you make that texture. So mix darker green with this lighter neon green, a little touch of white. Now I'm gonna take my magazine paper, just keep it flat as it comes, lay it down, give it a spin, and lift it off. Look, that's just totally different to that planet now. Awesome. So again, my light source is gonna be coming from this way, like it's hitting that planet. So with the black, we're gonna hit that with a shadow, curving it round just like that. The more curvy you can make the shadow, the more 3D your planet will end up looking. And for this guy, I think I'm also gonna put just a little white highlight on the other edge, just to really let that light source shine on the front of the planet. Here's some Neptune, I really love this color. Hitting that with some of this pool blue. And to mix up the texture now, instead of the magazine paper, I'm just gonna hit it with a plastic bag. A little smooth and peel it off. Just add a little bit more up here. It'll make it more interesting. So the light source is clearly coming from the middle of the page. So this time we need to take our shadow and put it around this side of the planet. I'm gonna have a more intense highlight on that one. Blue velvet, team spirit, and some white. And I've never tried this before, but I'm just gonna use the side of my hand and do some little karate chops. You know what? That's not that bad, I'm not gonna lie. But the last one, a little bit of black, a little bit of white. High five. Now the most important thing at this stage is that you leave all of these planets to fully dry before you do anything else. If I was to take this lid stencil right here and place it on one of these planets, if it's not dry, it will leave a ring around the edge of the planet and you will ruin your painting. Now these are dry, we can start covering all the planets with our individual stencils here. This space up the middle here is perfect for the Spectre Soldier. I think around this Spectre Soldier, I want to add a really cool looking nebula. We're taking some flame blue first and putting that right around the silhouette of the character. I'm going to add some gleaming pink over the top of that, just in a few spots. Back in with the weekly here and flat or crumpled, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use that to muddle this around and create a really interesting looking texture. Now we're coming in with the black and we're going to use this to start blacking the sky out. Make sure you cut into the edges of all your round stencils and you get a nice crisp looking planet at the end. Oh, and a quick life hack, if you take a really bright color and put it where you're gonna sign your work, that color will show through when you actually leave your signature. Now onto this painting, I'm gonna have multiple layers of stars. So with this white, I'm gonna spray a little on my finger, flick off the big chunks, and then just gently flick the stars around the page. Now I want to extend that nebula. Hit it with the blue, a little bit of pink. Now we can come in with a second layer of stars and against the nebula, these are really gonna pop. We know our light source is coming from this big nebula in the middle, so we can accentuate that by just taking some white and hitting the edges of our planet stencils here and we can give each planet a little shine. Make sure you do this on the light side, not the dark side. If you want, you can even tint those shines with a little bit of color. Now for the finishing touches, I can show you a couple little extra effects that are really easy. Fair piece of card. Cut a strip of it, something like this. Now fold that over. Hold it down over the painting, shoot through, and it'll give you a little shooting star. Grab another piece of card and a paintbrush or something, and just stab a hole through it. 
just like that. Now if you hang over an area with the white and shoot through it, you can give yourself a super bright star. Now with straight edge, I can add to that by holding it over my bright star and just shooting through it each way. Horizontal and diagonal. And now finally, the reveal of your planets. This is the best part of any space painting. Let's go. Boom. 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 And boom. That looks dope. And there's a space painting that literally anybody could make. I can't wait to see how the character looks on this. On to the next tutorial. So for the silent soldier, we're gonna paint a super easy jungle waterfall. So once again, this character is gonna go right in the middle. I'm gonna start by covering everything in a couple shades of gray. You can go with whatever you want here, but I'm starting with this stealth gray. And I'm coming over that with some gravel gray, which is slightly lighter. Now I'm gonna just cover all of this in black. Now I want the double page spread of that magazine paper. I'm gonna crumple that up. Lay it back over my painting and I'm just smoothing it across. I just wanna create a really nice, rocky texture. If you've not taken enough paint off, just dab it off with a clean part of the paper. Now you just need to decide how many waterfalls you want to have. I think we're going to have three or four here. So take some black and just create a shadow for each waterfall, like this. Maybe we'll have one right here. Holding the cam further away, that gives me a slightly bigger shadow. Now using this palette knife, I'm going to add some extra detail to this rocky kind of cliff face here. So in this shadow right here, maybe I want a little rock just to be perking out. And we're just lightly scratching off the paint. None of this has to be perfect. You're just making your scene a little bit more interesting. I'm thinking I'll just add rocks to the whole bottom of the cliff face while I'm here. Nice and gentle. Let gravity and the flow of it do the work. So I'm happy with the texture on this cliff face and for the next part I want to add the individual waterfalls. So for that I need some white and a spare piece of card. I'm starting by trimming this down so I can make this spare piece of card roughly the same width as the waterfalls themselves. The important thing is when you finish trimming down you have a straight edge available to apply the water with. Take the rest of your spare piece of card and lay the white down. This is a decent sized canvas so I'm going to need a fair bit of paint for this. I'm just going to scoop that white up so I've got a good amount of it on the end of my piece of card. Starting at the top of the shadow I created, I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna come straight down. If you scratch the rock through the middle of your shadow, you can also come in, drag it down, bounce it, drag it down. Drag, bounce, drag, drag, bounce, drag. Today we're keeping it simple, but if you wanted to add some blue into this white before you apply it, no problemo. Now to really bring this to life, we're gonna add some greenery and vegetation to this cliff face. You remember that paper towel? We well, need it now. So I'm taking a piece of paper towel here and I'm gonna fold it up in halves all the way until I end up with a little square. Now I have my little square, you wanna hold it from the strongest corner and then tear it from the side and try and tear it in like a circular motion until you end up with something that looks like this. See this little floofy part right here? This floof is gonna change everything. Now, I want three shades of green. Now I'm gonna take my floofy paper towel brush and I'm gonna dab it in the dark, the mid, and the light, and I'm gonna instantly start applying this to my painting. You really can't go wrong here. Just apply as much or as little as you like until you're happy with the amount of vegetation. You can even let this cross over your waterfalls and in fact, I think that just adds even more depth. Just apply as much as you like until you're happy. I think I'm ready to move on with this. So next I'm gonna show you a different type of greenery that looks really awesome as well. But before that, I'm gonna separate this part of the painting from the foreground. I'm gonna do that with mist. The best thing about using white mist in spray paint art is it's a really simple way to separate layers from the foreground and it gives you depth. It makes you feel like you're looking more into the painting rather than just everything being painted flat. The first bit of mist I'm gonna add is with some white and a spare piece of card. I'm gonna aim it towards the bottom of each waterfall where it would be landing. So this is to protect what's underneath. So I'm just gonna use this, hitting the card, and we're creating the impression of the water landing in a particular area. You can follow this upwards as well, if you wanna add a bit more or a bit less. I'm also doing this for the little rock pools, the waterfalls here on the way down. And now I'm just gonna come in with the white across the bottom in general, and this is what's gonna give us our separation. Now I need another spare piece of card and a sponge. This actually came off a car sponge off the corner. I just uh, 
cut it off because I want this round circular shape. But you can buy art grade circular sponges, so you could do that as well. Dark green first. Take the circular sponge and dab it in the dark green. We're gonna use that circular shape here to create some different styles of bushes. We're gonna use all three shades and this dark green is gonna be the thickest layer. Don't go too hard though, it's all about the texture and the kind of shapes we're creating here. Dab on that, same sponge, doesn't matter. And again, follow the shape of where you've been before, applying slightly less this time. Finally, the light green. Same again, but these are literally just highlights. You just wanna to touch at the tops of each bush. In my painting, I know my character's gonna go here, so I'm just painting a little rock for them to stand on. I think this jungle waterfall looks pretty sick. You can use these techniques in a load of different painting styles and it helps really level up your artwork. These three tutorials alone will set you up to create some amazing looking paintings and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. But now we've got our three awesome backdrops, there's just one thing left to do and that's add these characters. Let's freaking do it! <laughs> Mobile is one of the most popular games in the world and their PDP competition, which is the Potopia design project, is all about the unity of the game's fan base and encourages them to be epically creative. It is a global community source co-creation program where designers and the community of PUBG Mobile players create for themselves. And this includes anything from character design, fan art or even cosplay. Some of the winning creations can even end up in the game, so it's a pretty big deal. The submissions are absolutely amazing that I've seen so far, so I'm feeling the pressure to make sure these three pieces absolutely slap. So before I reveal these three epic paintings, I just want to show my appreciation to PUBG Mobile and the PDP competition. Encouraging fans old and new to create and be a true part of the game's development and community is a huge deal. And the more we see of this in the gaming industry, the better a time gamers will have all over the world. If you want to join the action, I'll leave a link in the description where you can download PUBG Mobile on either iOS or Android. Don't forget the PUBG Mobile eSports Outfit Design Challenge and the PDP Ultimate Set Design Challenge are up now. If you want to take part, I'll leave links in the description so you can get stuck in. And one more little thing, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give the like button a little tickle and consider subscribing for more future content like this. Now, without further ado, squiggle my diggle and boom.